EMS professionals know that acting fast saves lives. Making the right decisions at the right time during life and death situations requires ongoing training. It's hard to improve performance by providing a lecture. So we started looking at ways to get our street level personnel in to practice some of the things that they may not get to do very often. Across the state, providing continued education for EMS is vital. The Medical University of South Carolina offers a unique hour-long simulation session with four emergency scenarios. A lot of people like doing simulation. Paramedics especially like to have hands-on, so they want to touch the patient of the mannequin, they want to listen to the lungs, they want to actually start the IV or uh, do the airway techniques, and we don't let them do that. And I know this is something different. Which EMS professionals who are stationed across the state are able to join by video. This one-of-a-kind setup challenges the participants' decision-making skills. Throughout the simulation, participants direct medical procedures to the on-location facilitators. What that allows them to do is not worry about whether they can start the IV or whether they can get the right airway device in place, but really just focus on what do I need to do to make this patient better? What medications do they need? What interventions do they need? And if that doesn't work, then what's my next step? Uh, this is something new for us that allows us to focus on our critical thinking. Ready? Yes, I am one of the facilitators, so when crews on the other side of the TV t um, give us a task, then we will perform it. Chelsea, could you get him uh, a baseline set of vials? Sure. There's no point where I felt like I couldn't ask questions because I knew on the other side of the camera were two experienced providers as well. So I could ask a question, get the feedback from them, and then process that information and make a decision based off of their response. And maybe hook up a nebulized mask. You have different providers from all over the state that are coming in. It's interesting to see the different approach that people are used to taking. This interactive simulation is just one of the ways telehealth is increasing access to quality health care in South Carolina. With this type of continued education, EMS can feel more confident about the decisions they are making when a true emergency strikes. And what we've done is we've made the scenarios increasingly difficult as they go along. Reinforce some of the lessons that we're trying to teach them. And between each one we'll do a quick debriefing and then at the end we'll do a longer debriefing and a bigger picture as to what all this means. And that's really what this is about. If they didn't do an intervention or if they didn't do a timely intervention, those are things that I want to talk about. If they did something really well, I want to highlight that. Any other questions or comments? The goal wasn't to try to get them to save the mannequin. It was more to focus on the decision making and trying to use the data that they were getting to improve the, the mannequin or the patient's condition. What's happened over the last 20 years with the advent of video conferencing technology and the increase in the capacity for the web to handle those technologies has been um, an expectation that people will be trained and have access to information without having to physically transverse time in geographic spaces. When you focus on critical thinking like we did today, I think that is one of the biggest impacts in terms of saving someone's life. Um, a lot of times we kind of joke and say, well, you could uh, you know, train a small child to perform the same skills that we do, but you can't train someone to, to think critically like that. <laughs>